Hey guys, Stripter here, and welcome to Modern Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, I have for you a pistol guide. I'm going to be covering all of the pistols in Modern Warfare, all six of them, and yes, I did say six because there is a secret pistol in this game, in one massive guide so that you can compare and contrast all the secondary weapons in one place and choose the best one for your playstyle. Personally, I think that the best secondary weapon you can carry is a lock-on rocket launcher of some kind so that you can help your team shoot down streaks and so that you can just spam into camper corners and windows if you need to. But not a lot of people really enjoy having the launchers because they're slow and they're bulky and they are a bit unreliable, so today we're just going to focus on the pistols. I will say, after getting all of this gameplay before the patch, before the pistols got their buff, and before we had the lighting balance and the footstep balance, it was extremely hard to kill people, and almost no pistols in Modern Warfare can be competitive with primary weapons. This is not the game to run around pistols only, you will get murdered. It was one of the most challenging and tilting things that I have ever done in a Call of Duty game to get this gameplay. I did update all the specs though for post-patch. I do want to also say that there are unique body multipliers for the head, upper chest, torso, limbs, and forearms in the case of snipers. So we have at least four unique damage regions for every single pistol in the game and for a lot of weapons in general, which made the testing and the shots to kill and the damage over range, all of that stuff, much more complex than you would expect. Pistols might be the only weapons that I would recommend hip firing with as well. They have much tighter and more predictable hip fire recoils than any other weapon in the game, hip fire spreads I should say, and when you're getting in people's spaces, it's close enough where it doesn't matter a whole lot. I've had pretty good luck spamming from the hip with many of the pistols in Modern Warfare. Now let's start off with the proper review with pistol number one, which is the X16, better known as the Glock in real life. The X16 in this game is tied for second overall lowest damage it's tied with the 1911, though it has less range than that weapon. The actual damage numbers on the X16 are 72 damage to the head up close, and it'll go down to 48 at long distances. The upper chest is 42 to 28, the lower chest is 36 to 24, and the legs will be 33 down to 22. So you can reliably two-tap people to the head. Body shots are usually going to be three, or if you're at long ranges, it could be four or five if we're looking at legs. Most of the time, I'm gonna say you're gonna need three to four shots to kill with this weapon, just kind of depending on where you're hitting the enemy. Definitely don't shoot them in the legs though, that'll just ruin your time to kill and damage, and that's a, that's a bad Call of Duty habit that I have to break, because I've been shooting legs for years now. Rate of fire is a little bit on the higher side of pistols at 280 rounds per minute. If you put the lightweight trigger on, which will increase your fire rate cap, it'll go up to around 350 rounds per minute. And please do keep in mind that these are approximations since I am doing this by hand and I don't have macros to really like crank the exact rate of fire out of these guns. I will say that time to kill is not particularly fast on this weapon. It's not the slowest. It's probably just below middle of the pack overall. The X16 does, however, have slightly faster handling specs than all of the other pistols. So if you want a weapon that you can aim down sights or shoot from sprinting with just a little bit faster than anything else, the X16 is going to be the way to go, and those specs are the base aim down sights time is 167 milliseconds, and if you just kit it for maximum aim down sights time, it'll go down to about 130. And the crazy thing on this one is the sprint out time was 200, but when I kitted it for maximum sprint out time. I actually managed to get it down to 80 milliseconds, which is just a couple of frames and is almost instant. So if you want to run around hip firing with this one, you can do so to your heart's content. I will say that recoil tends to be a little snappy and unpredictable, sometimes hard to use, much like real Glocks. That's why they're not preferred by professional shooters. And it is, it's not the most comfortable weapon to shoot with. I love my Glocks at home for a lot of reasons, but their recoil is less than ideal. I will say the big magazine count is nice though. A lot of the pistols in this game have small mags, so just having that large magazine count is very nice. And I'll say that the X16 is very average, very middle of the pack for pistols. But let's move on to the 1911, which is similar to the X16 in a lot of ways. The 1911 has the same damage as the X16, but significantly better range. The 1911 damage, these are the same numbers that we had before, they're literally identical, except you're adding about 30% range to all of these regions, so you can get three 
three and four shot kills at longer ranges than you could with the X16 pistol. You can still two tap to the head, but this one's usually going to be a three shot kill. You've only got seven rounds in your magazine, so if you're using more than three, you have problems. I would expect three shot kills for most of your time with the 1911. The rate of fire is pretty similar to the X16, only very slightly slower at 270 RPM base, and it'll go up to 340 RPM with the lightweight trigger on there, and the lightweight trigger has just got to be the best attachment for any pistol in the game. Like, the lightweight trigger is one that you always want to have on, because you always want those bullets coming out as fast as possible, because these are true secondary weapons that you're only going to pull in case of just absolutely desperate times. The 1911 has a mathematically poor time to kill. Like if I looked at this max and min time to kill, it's not very spectacular on the 1911. But what I will say about it though, is that it holds that time to kill over longer ranges than most other pistols, except for, you know, like the super high caliber ones, all of the other more spammy pistols. So that time to kill is gonna be much more consistent and predictable, and it'll perform much better at long ranges. The handling specs are perfectly average for pistols. You'll see these numbers quite a few times. It's 200, 200 milliseconds to aim down sights. It's 150 if you kit it, and it's 200 sprinting out and 80 milliseconds if you kit it for maximum sprint out time with lasers and all that stuff so it does share that one with the x16 but it's a little bit slower in terms of aim down sights time recoil is a little bit harsh if you use the iron sights personally i'm not a big fan of 1911 iron sights in game or in real life for that matter but i still do prefer to use this weapon over the x16 or the m19 because despite the slightly higher recoil and the little bit wonky iron sights it still just has much better performance over range and it feels much less like i'm shooting bbs at people this weapon does have a major drawback, and that's that the M1911 only has seven round magazines by default. You have to level the gun to unlock the higher tier magazines, and seven round magazines means even if you don't miss any shots, you can at most kill two people per magazine. And if you start missing shots, which I do pretty frequently, it's probably just going to be a one person per magazine killer, which is kind of scary. But again, these are not designed to get multi kills with, these are not designed to take down big waves of people. People, but rather they are just designed to be true secondary pull and spray weapons and now it's time for our Astro sponsorship moment but instead of something boring today I have some really good news for you I'm having a fan meetup this coming weekend on Saturday I'm gonna be meeting greeting signing and giving away up to 100 Astro gaming headsets to anybody that shows up so let's go ahead and play this video that I recorded a couple weeks ago Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got some good news for you, which is that I'm having a Dallas fan meetup this very weekend. It is going to be Saturday, November 16th, between 4 and 6 p.m., right here at Madness Games and Comics in my hometown in Plano. If you want to get a better look at the building so you know what you're looking for, let's do that right now. Okay. The store you're looking for has this gigantic sign out front, except of course it'll be in the afternoon so you won't have the crazy sun in the background. As you walk into the store, you may notice that this isn't your normal gaming and comic book shop. It's gigantic, like, I would like to say almost Walmart or Kroger size. I want to say this building used to be one of those. I'm not only am I holding my meetup here this weekend, but I'm also going to be giving away about 100 Astro headsets. I haven't locked in the number just yet. I don't know how many they're willing to ship me, but my goal is to give away 100 headsets to any and all who show up. Fans, subscribers, regular store customers, even people that don't like me, you're welcome to just come and get the headsets. I thought it'd be a fun place to do the fan meetup because it's local to Plano where I live. And when people come to Plano and they're like, what's going on in Plano? what's neat, what's fun and cool here. Madness is one of the few places that I take them because in my opinion, it's a very, very unique store. You don't see a whole lot of this kind of fun stuff anywhere else. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Oh, is that Berserk? Look at this. Oh man. <laughs> see, this, this is the store, all that YouTube money I make, it's gone. It just gets swallowed up in here. But um, I'm gonna be signing things, I'm gonna be taking pictures, I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff. And this wouldn't be possible without my partnership with Astro Gaming. They are giving me the flexibility and the budget to book nice places like this, to have headsets, to do meetups, and do a lot more fun stuff with in-depth that I previously couldn't do. So big shout out to Astro. The link and all the information for this giveaway is available down there in the description below. And I hope that a lot of you come out this Saturday. I really do, because this is gonna be, in my opinion, I think this is gonna be super fun. I've kind of almost made a little loop around the back of the store. But as I spin around, see these black tables back here? 
on this left wall, I'm getting a table of my own, a big banner, a bunch of fun stuff to sign. And uh, yeah, hope you come see me at what won't be a vacant space in the future. And again, that's gonna be Saturday, November 16th at four to 6 p.m. I'll see you guys here. You'll find a link to the meetup down there below in the description. It's a Facebook link. It's an event that Madness Comics created. And if you could do me a favor, please click the attending button on Facebook if you can, so that I can plan accordingly, so I can get a head count, so that the people at the store kind of know what to expect. That would be very helpful to me if you plan to attend, and I hope to see a lot of you there. If you're not able to attend, you could of course click the Astro Gaming link to give me a super high click-through rate or especially pick up a C40 controller or A40 headset because this is all funded through sales. It's an affiliate sales deal. There's no surprise or secret there. So if the sales don't happen, fun stuff like this has to come to an abrupt end. But let's move on to some of the better pistols. I saved most of the better ones for last. Let's talk about the 357 Magnum. The 357 Magnum is a two-shotting machine. This is one of the better secondary weapons in Modern Warfare, in my opinion, because the damage is so high. And that damage is 100 plus to the head up close, meaning it will instantly one-shot kill people to the head up to pretty good ranges, as a matter of fact. And at super long ranges, headshots drop down to 76 damage, which is still incredibly high and will finish off weak people almost always. The upper chest will deal 77 up close and 51 at a distance. Lower will be 73 to 49, depending on your range. And legs have a really huge variability of 70 damage per shot down to 22 damage per shot, which gives a lot of sort of unreliability with 357. It can one shot kill to the head, or it could take up to five leg shots at really long ranges, but it's usually going to be a two shot kill weapon. I, at least while playing on console, did not have the skill to snap aim heads very well with this one, and I was very frequently missing and shooting and the upper body and the neck and the shoulders and just places that really wasn't counting. So my recommendation is instead of going for headshots, go for the two body shots. That has worked better for me. Rate of fire is the slowest among all pistols at 116 rounds per minute. If you put the lightweight trigger on there, it goes up to 142 rounds per minute. And I will say that this is an extremely important attachment on the 357 Magnum. It is painful to shoot somebody once in the chest and have to wait for them to shoot back three or four more times before you can pull the trigger even once to get your follow-up shot. And by then you're flinching so high your follow-up shot's gonna go to the moon. Adding the lightweight trigger allows you to get that second killing follow-up shot way faster, and it will save your life more times than any other attachment you can put on this one, except of course for the secret one, which we'll talk about very shortly. The 357 handling specs are slower than the other pistols as well they should be. It's 280 milliseconds to aim down sights and 100 70 if you hit it for maximum ADS. Your sprint out times are about the same as the other pistols normally, but you can't hit the sprint out times to be that much slower. That one only goes down to 170 milliseconds. I didn't measure the maximum times on these weapons because especially for the heavier weapons, you can put stocks on them and sniper scopes and you can make them, you can make them really awful if you want to, but I assumed that most of you are gonna be trying to make them faster, snappier, and more aggressive types of weapons. The 357 Magnum is all about getting precision hits. If you have great aim, then this gun will be godly. If you have bad aim, then this gun's probably going to feel like trash for you. This gun is all about your ability to aim, your skill, and in many ways, your patience, because recoil is too harsh for long range shots to be spammable. If you, if you just go spamming people at long range, you're gonna hit absolutely nothing. You can definitely snipe people with this gun, but you have to be slow and methodical and patient about it and line your shots up and know what you're doing and you know kind of lead them because the bullet isn't as fast as most sniper shots. You can put a sniper scope on it. Up close, it doesn't kick so much that you can't just spam people in the chest and that works fine. But to really, what you really want this weapon for is to just be able to break it out and just get that one, like kind of like one D peek on somebody and pop them at long ranges. And that takes a significant amount of skill. There is another big drawback, which is that you only have six rounds per, I want to say mag magazine, but it's a cylinder because it's a revolver, you know. 
and you have to reload that almost all the time. So in my personal experience, I found that sleight of hand is a very nice thing to add to the 357 Magnum because you're going to be reloading a lot. Generally, I don't like this one as much as the Deagle. It is still one of the better weapons, but I really think the way to truly use the 357 Magnum to bring out its true potential is to add the 38 caliber snake shot attachment to it, which turns it literally into the Black Ops 2 Executioner, and now you're ready to go. The 357 Magnum with the snake shot ammo is godly. It is a top tier weapon. It doesn't change any of the other stats on the gun. All of the other like rate of fire and reload and all that's the same, but it turns it into one of the most powerful shotguns in the game and definitely the best pistol. You'll get all kinds of one shot kills. And in my experience, since you have a wider spread, you can two tap people more reliably at long ranges. Even if you miss a little bit, they'll still get clipped by the spread and you can kill them pretty easily. I, when I, this is going to be like my pistol of choice. This is my secondary weapon that I use when I'm not doing launchers. I'll run this one and maybe the Deagle. Though I will admit that grinding for the snake shot attachment was miserable. It's painful. It's so hard to grind out the pistols. Don't use the XRK variant for this one because it won't give you any experience for whatever reason. You got to start with the plain Jane 357 Magnum and go all the way up to it's like almost 30 or 40 levels to get the snake shot. But once you do, it's great. I mean, I can, I can use this as a primary if I want to. This thing just shreds people and it'll be your choice to kit it for range or for reaction time just kind of depending on how you plan to play with it and what you want to do but I think that those of you that do use this attachment will find the weapon significantly improved and just generally way easier to use. Okay moving along we have another pistol that I'm sure that all of you want to meme on which is the M19. This is often considered the worst pistol in the game, and for good reasons too. It's the only 9mm, 9mm pistol in Modern Warfare, so it is the lowest caliber pistol in the game, meaning it's going to deal the least damage and have the worst ballistics and all that. So it's the pea shooter, it shoots spit wads, it just tickles people at long ranges, and that's why a lot of people, myself included, don't really like it. The actual damage profile of this weapon is 61 to the head and up close and 48 at longer ranges, meaning you can actually two tap up close still. The upper chest is 36 to 28, lower chest is 30 to 24, and legs is 28 to 22. This is lower than any of the other faster, more spammy semi-automatic pistols, and it is the lowest damage pistol in the game. It also has the lowest range of any pistol in Modern Warfare. Not that that's going to matter too much because most pistol engagements are close range anyway, but it's probably the only one where you'll really, you might actually notice some fall off there. It most often takes four to five shots to kill, in my experience. You, you have to put a lot of lead downstream to kill people with this pistol, which is what makes it unpopular, and it's one of the reasons that I don't use it. However, it does have a really nice rate of fire. The rate of fire is 300 rounds per minute, and if you put the lightweight trigger on it, that's 400 rounds per minute, which is the highest in the pistol cast, so you can really shoot this one frequently. Your follow-up shots are frequent, and what that means is that you're punished less for mistakes with the M19. In some ways, the M19 is almost a noob pistol because your follow-up shots are so quick, your penalty for missing is minimal, and it's got a huge magazine, which we'll talk about in a little bit. However, despite the faster rate of fire, time to kill is still going to be a little bit on the slow side. It's just damage is too low, and mathematically it doesn't kind of pan out too well. It's not a fast killing pistol. The M19 has the same handling specs as the regular 1911 with 200 millisecond aim down sights, 150 for minimum if you put all the attachments on it. Sprint out's 200 and it can go down to 80 if you really, really kit it out that way, which is, I think is one of the better ways to do it in my opinion, so you can really get on target quickly. Recoil is also probably the most manageable of all pistols, so I would tell you to spam to your heart's content, and that makes sense given that it is a 9mm pistol, it's lower recoil, I fired this exact gun in real life compared to, actually I think I fired all these guns in real life, and yes, it doesn't kick a whole lot. 9mm really don't kick very much in, on most weapons. And it does have a 17 round magazine, which is awesome. This makes it easier to engage on multiple enemies, especially if they're lined up because your bullets can go through and hit multiple and you can just tap through the head and stuff like that. The big magazine is, in my opinion, one of the better parts of this pistol. And it's one of the things that makes it more easily usable is they don't have to just constantly be reloading all the time. However, I overall don't recommend the M19. Finally, at the end of the episode, let's talk about the .50 caliber GS, which is the Desert Eagle, or as I like to call it, the Deagle, so that's what I'm going to write down up here as much as I can. The Deagle is the highest damage and most reliable secondary weapon in Modern Warfare. 
I mean, we've kind of known that since the gunfight alpha and the beta. We know the Desert Eagle is popular, but let me try to explain why. The Desert Eagle has the same headshot damage as the Magnum, as far as I can tell. It deals 100 plus up to a pretty absurd range, and will drop off to 72 damage to the head at super long ranges, meaning it's always two shots to the head, no matter how far away the enemy is, or at least as far as I was able to test. Upper chest is 77, but will dip down to 49 at long ranges, which is a little bit lower than that of the Magnum. Upper lower chest is 77 to 45, and the legs are 70 to 45, which is better than the Magnum. The Magnum will go down to 22 to the legs at super long ranges, so you can always three tap to the legs. And what this means is that the pistol can one shot to the head, take up to three at long ranges, or more commonly two to the body. The rate of fire is better than that of the Magnum at 180 rounds per minute, and if you put the lightweight trigger on it, which is another one I would recommend, it'll go up to 220 rounds per minute. This makes it a faster firing follow-up weapon than the Magnum, which in my opinion makes it superior, and it has essentially the same handling specs as the Magnum as well, so it's going to be slower than the other semi-auto pistols in Modern Warfare. The Deagle, in my opinion, has a very nice balance of precision headshots, spamming body shots, and rate of fire follow-up. So if you've got great aim, then you can just one-tap people to the head. You can one dig them all day and that's great. You can get, uh, you can just spam people to get those two body shots. You got great rate of fire, so you can get your follow-up shots with less penalty than that of the revolver. I think that the Desert Eagle does have overall more recoil due to the higher rate of fire, but I find the recoil to be more predictable than other pistols pistols, or more, well, I should say, than the 357 Magnum. I have a much better feel and handle on the Desert Eagle than I do on the Magnum, which is why I think it is the superior pistol in the game. It does have seven base rounds, which is only a little bit better than the Magnum, but you can put extended mags on and give it more of an edge over that Magnum if you want to, which the Magnum can't update. So I think the Deagle is great. I would recommend using it all the time. There's really only two pistols, I think, that are ones you should want, and that's the Desert Eagle, and you should want the Magnum with a snake shot ammo. The rest of them, in my opinion, are generally avoidable. You would want to use them only as a true secondary when you're desperate. You can't go around pistol only, or you're going to have a very very, very bad time. Guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. I hope that you sign up to come meet me at the fan meetup. Well, you can just show up if you want to, but the sign up helps me plan. Or click that astro link and buy some products. Drifter out.